welcome to today's show. My name is Katoria. I am your host and a member of Janet Collections marketing team. Today with me, I have my girl. Hi, my name is Aziza Muhammad. I'm also a member of the marketing team here at Janet Collections. Hi, I'm Janelle Black, a master cosmetologist and a beauty creative director. Hi, my name is Ray Nicole Davis, and I am a digital content creator. Hi, I am Ebony Walker, and I am a full-figured model. So today, Janet Collection just decided to bring us all together as uh, members of the beauty industry to talk about things that just pretty much don't ever get addressed. So we've got some hot topics and some things that you never really hear the perspective on of the people within the beauty industry. Because let's be honest, you know these guys are not black owned, but they're getting these black and brown dollars. So what is cultural appropriation and what does it mean to you? Aziza, let's kick it off. So I would say cultural appropriation, in my opinion, is like an adoption of another culture's like traditions, practices, and it's kind of represented and branded in a way where like that culture of origin isn't given, you know, their props or like their respect. So that's what it means to me. To piggyback on that, to me, it's when you take someone else's cultural identity um, or some of their, um, no, I think I guess that's a good way of putting it, like some of their, um, whether it's clothes, whether it's fashion or um, the way they do makeup, the style of hair, um, a lot of their customs for personal gain. Um, and to me, it's a big difference between like cultural appropriation and cultural appreciation. I feel like a lot of times we can adopt um, some things from other cultures and incorporate it um, within a lot of our, uh, between like daily uses and how we kind of see ourselves. But I feel like a big part of that is also respect and understanding because when you have respect and understanding, you know, you're met, you're less likely to misrepresent what these social norms mean within that culture so i completely agree with all of the ladies i think the biggest things for me is the lack of acknowledgement like you know we obviously know black women are <laughs> the inventor of the shit. <laughs> we kind of create everything we create we are the ones who created life if we really want to get that deep so not necessarily black against everybody else but it's just the acknowledgement that hey i recognize this is the origin of your culture but i want to use it a little bit to do my own personal style i acknowledge it and let me rock it out how i want to but unfortunately people don't acknowledge it and that's why we have cultural appropriation and i think it's not that they just don't acknowledge it i also see that a lot of times they do it and it's like as if we never did it, you know? Like they try to take credit for it as if they were the inventors of it all together. So yes, in regards to appreciation, um, if you know you didn't take it and you're trying to take credit for actually creating it, I think that is definitely an issue. Yeah, I agree with all of you guys. For me, it's the fact that we are often demonized for things that we create we are seen as ghetto or hood or substandard or non-professional. But when people of other cultures do the exact same thing, it's praised and it's paid for. If we could think of any examples of cultural appropriation, I'm going to start. I think my- I got one. Look. You got one too? Right. <laughs> my look, went straight look, to I'm one thing. Look, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to start with mine. Mine is mm -hmm. going to be the boxer braids. The boxer braids. Our braids, the Kim Kardashian braids or the boxer braids or the Bo Derek braids. And I'm like, first of all, who taught y'all how to... Because if it wasn't for us, if it wasn't for our skill and our talent, these things wouldn't have been around. You know what I mean? Because I mean, a simple pony, a simple high or low, mm -hmm. that's pretty much been it throughout the years. We can't go to a professional setting, used to not be able to go to a professional setting with cornrows. They would look at us like we were crazy. And now it's like the thing to do. Even down to, what was her name? Rachel Dolezal. And that baby still wears her kente cloth and she has herself perched, baby, perched. Her oils and, her pink. and it's just like if you're going to do it please acknowledge the originators and the creators now at the same time are we being a little sensitive should we take it as flattery 
I don't know. But back to the example. Um, do you want to go next? Okay. Oh, I don't mind jumping in real quick. So my examples were nails. I remember still like being in high school, it was a really big thing to get every finger done. You know, we got all 10, even sometimes our toes, all different colors and shapes. And I felt like at one point in time, it was seen as ghetto. It was like, you know, that's something, you know, I'm originally from New Jersey. So it was something like literally, I think I got my first set when I was like in eighth grade or something. And that's just how we did. Like that was a normal thing. And I noticed it was like, you know, when I moved to certain areas, it looks down, down upon. But then on social media, all of a sudden, you see all these different people of different colors wearing extendo nails and stuff. Like, you know, it's not a thing anymore. So I just think that's so interesting to see how, you know, when somebody else wears it, you know, if their name happens to be, you know, Bridget, you know, all of a sudden this is now acceptable. So I think another example um, would be hair color. Um, specifically, I'm wearing blonde, um, for instance, and one would say we are trying to be like white women or like European centers where indigenous people, African indigenous people all around the world are blonde, blue eyed. So again, black woman was the first woman. So we kind of just invented all of it. So. And even when like you see reds and you see blue hair and you see all of that, when we do it, it's ghetto. But when they do it, it's a fashion color. It's She's good. creative. It's creative. <laughs> right, 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 right. No disrespect to coming from my mouth, no disrespect to any other culture, but we just talking raw facts. Like we pretty much start beauty trends. We are beauty trends down to our bodies, down to the way we talk the way we move our hands, the periods, like, you know, all of that, all of it. Well, I have a question for your example, though. Like you had said that some people may think that would be considered appropriation by us adopting blonde hair. Some people would say that would be more so assimilation because, you know, we are the minority versus the minorities. So what would you think about that? I agree with you. It, it, it would, for me, I don't think it's a, uh, appropriating towards another one. It's assimilating. Because, mm -hmm. for example, your hair, if you work mm -hmm. in a corporate world, if you were to take your hair into a corporate world, they're going to be like, Miss Ray, uh, <laughs> you're quite not up to standard <laughs> in the office. So um, go home and simulate what we do. So that it can be more approachable, less threatening. Mm -hmm. you know? so, your curls are hurting my feelings. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, but we have a simulated to adopt more lighter color hair. And yet again, not putting anyone else down, but when we do it, it's, it's, it's always a revolution. It, it's, mm -hmm. honey, when it's we pick up, it's a revolution it. every time. Like, mm -hmm. so yes, it is a stimulation. Y'all help me on this one. So can we, like as black women, appropriate um, um, cultural appropriate, like can we do that? Or I no. think it gets sticky because are you guys familiar with like Afro punk? Yeah. I love Afro punk, huge fan. I love it too, but I've I've definitely heard some people where they kind of gave African Americans the side eye when it came to a lot of their ritualistic like makeup and incorporating um, different patterns and stuff into their outfits while participating in that festival but i'm like you know but that's a part of their history too like so right because they're trying to show appreciation. so i'm like uh like for those conversations like that i usually try to listen like okay like, i'm just trying to hear everybody out like <laughs> yeah, if you if you're talking about quote-unquote afropunk Listen to the very word punk. We know that's alternative, that's gothic, that's that's mm -hmm. all of such. Come on, we've been deemed gothic and dark since the time of day, since they deem our skin to be not good. Oh, so let's, and if we want to go to rock and roll and all of that, we invented that too. <laughs> so it's just like, uh, I think the only time it gets sticky is when you are wearing garbs of different cultures. I wanted to find an example of Black women where they could be crossing the line. Um, I believe it was Beyonce and um, 
it was when it was a music video and she had all this traditional Indian garb on. She even had like the little chain dropping down in the middle of her forehead. Uh, was it with um, Shakira? No, it wasn't when it was Shakira. It was, hold on. I gotta find the, um, well, while you look for that, Aziza, did you have an opinion on that? I saw you kind of stick your hand up a little earlier. I was gonna say, like, I feel like I've come across so many, like, like pictures and magazines or like just on social media of like white women wearing like afros. And to me, it kind of like, it like takes me, it I take a step back because it's like for women within the black community, it's like we kind of, Ident a large part of us kind of identifies with our hair. And it's like, when a white woman does, it's like, do you know what goes into that afro? Do you know what goes into those curls? Do you know how much maintenance that requires? You know, so it's kind of like, you know, you don't have the knowledge behind what it what it means to have black hair. So how can you like represent it, represent it, you know, in the light that you're doing it? Because it just, it just doesn't sit with me the right way. Did you guys see that video? where there's an um, an artist, she had on complete prosthetic face, black face. Oh yeah, face, I saw and that. Oh, yeah. Face, and you know, saw them and, wiping her makeup off. And you saw them like just take the whole thing off. And I was just like, so you're out here performing as a black artist, mm -hmm. but you're not a black artist. Like, I don't feel like there's any gray area in that work. It's like, is it appreciation? Is it appropriate? Like, I feel like things like that are complete appropriation because you're you're technically making a living off of being a black woman when it's See, that that's further than that i don't know like that's that's way more than i don't know what the word for that is but i think that that supersedes appropriation like that's just right. deceiving. <laughs> <laughs> like oh my gosh i'm gonna have to look that up right. yeah you it's, haven't seen that video no, no. it's, it's insane I, and that's kind of like what my my example was. My example is like you know, um, the wanting to make your lip bigger or curves of your body. Like this is not stuff that you guys were made with. Now everyone wants to go get plastic surgery so they can have you know a booty. Um, and I seen a video. It was a a video of a lady. She was doing an athletic wear shoot, and they put fake booty. Like. What were we doing here? So uh, those are my examples. Uh, you know the, uh... Well, I found the picture. Oh yeah, Indian culture. That's definitely Indian. I feel like for like in for that example, I don't feel like that's cultural appropriation. I feel like it becomes cultural appropriation when it's like you're like misrepresenting it. I don't feel like she's disrespecting the culture in any way. Like I think she's just like like appreciating the culture. She's, Correct. she's acknowledging it. She's embracing it. You know, I don't feel like it's like she's, you know, kind of just stealing what, you know, Indian culture and Indian garments. I don't think that's what that is. So I think it's appreciation as well. It's similar to um, I think we spoke about this once before, Aziza, someone wearing a hijab, but then having on like a bikini like okay no you're doing you're doing the wrong thing there but someone you know wearing a hijab and, and perfectly being covered from head to toe and you know representing or being respectful of the culture by putting it on that's a big difference but if you're like in a bikini with a hijab like trying to like be in a music video like that's kind of not the move that's um one thing i wanted culture. to yeah say it again ebony oh, that's disrespectful to that culture Correct. Um, one thing I was thinking about touching back on what you just said, Ebony, the injections of the lips and the body parts and the getting the big butts and the getting the big breasts. Now, I almost feel like society, us as black people are so programmed to want to assimilate into white culture that now that they are getting the fake butts and the fake boobs to look like us. Now it's boomerangs back around and now we're getting the fake butts and the fake lips right. to kind of look like them. Like and, yeah. and I'm like, we are so brainwashed. I feel like everything kind of just goes full circle when it comes to cultural appropriation. It's like you always, you're trying to be, in certain instances you want to be like some something that you're not. That's why it kind of relates to like, the you know beauty the image of beauty and things like that like it just goes full circle because it's like you want to be somebody or you want to act as somebody that you're not or become somebody that you're not so yeah. Yeah. so from there i would love to know about what are the dangers of someone culturally appropriating another culture's 
tradition. If anybody wants to jump in, please go right ahead. Um, I would sorry, I would say um, like when it happens within like big businesses and brands and stuff like that, when they kind of showcase these different looks and styles, you know it kind of trickles down. So it starts with like the models wearing a certain look and then it trickles down to like, you know, maybe an Instagram model and then it trickles down to like one of your friends and then it just becomes a trend. And then that trend is just overall, like it's just disrespectful. So it just kind of just continues to trickle down and then it like just spreads and everyone just kind of starts starts becoming guilty of culture, cultural appropriation. So yeah, we are not a trend. I yeah. am not a trend. <laughs> I, I think for me, I think we first have to acknowledge that in media, when it, it, it attains to beauty, um, we just do not have the representation. And they'll rather choose a white model, then curl her hair to be textured, than actually hiring a model with textured hair for the product. Uh, I think that's when it gets dangerous. When you literally choose someone of, it's almost like you represent the orange and you not even an orange, you've never been in that experience, but yet we're gonna do that. We're gonna put an apple and we're gonna change it into an orange. Mm -hmm. So I think the danger is when it comes to media, I think we have to start, especially us as black women and black beauty influences and all that we have to call we have to hold the um industry accountable start hiring the people that need to be in these roles yeah i think that's what it kind of is start the danger starts and it that trickles down to little girls that like hey i really don't see myself on tv and i don't know i don't have anything to aspire to now i will say because of the times we in it is changing but I still think we need to do a lot more and they need to do a lot more within showing the real representation and not always hiring the racially ambiguous black model. Let a black girl be on there. Let the black girl be in, in the mix. And then think about it for me as a being a stylist, it's, it's so many times that I have been on set where I'm sitting with the model and they like, oh, thank God you're here because Listen. they don't know how to do my hair. They don't know how to do my skin. And these are where it shows up. This is where cultural appropriation is starting to show up. And this is why they tend to choose the lighter skin. They tend to choose the, the, the model with the less kink of your hair. That's why that tends to happen. But I don't know, I feel like we literally have to take stand and keep having conversations like this, let conversations like this be seen on major platforms so that we create a wave, that we kind of have to start changing it. Cause you know, they ain't doing a good job. <laughs> we gotta do, they gotta do better. So guys, have any of you ever ran into someone who was actually appropriating your culture or another culture face to face? Like, have you ever experienced it in real time in your real life? And how did it make you feel? I feel like, you know, in like the New York City, like the tri-state area, you know, it, because it's so like culturally diverse, people kind of, again, kind of like step step over that, like that line of cultural appropriation and cu cultural appreciation. I feel like I've seen so many like white women wear long box braids, like pink box braids. And I'm like, this is not you. This is not for you. Please, it doesn't even look right. Please stop. <laughs> that part. So. So, okay, so let's take that example. So let's say there is someone of another culture who gets the box braids. They get some nice knotless braids down to their waist and they're swinging and blinging and they have on door knockers, but they're regularly chill. Or let's say they, they grew up in the hood around all black people and they feel like this is just who I am. Like, is there ever a time when we, we look at a person like that and don't assume it's cultural appropriation, uh, but that it's just like natural for them to, to feel comfortable because that's what they've seen or grown up with? When it's authentic, it's authentic. You yeah. won't question it. Like, and you'll know it. You'll know when she grew up in the hood because the- act You grew up like, with her. <laughs> right, you gonna know because everything gonna roll off smooth. It's gonna be the, it's gonna be the dialect the motions, the gestures, everything is gonna flow with so with ease. So you'll know when like, all right, Becky, girl, 
Like, you didn't get a relief call too long. long. It made Y'all me think of that girl, um, that girl Batty, that was on the uh, oh, show. Oh, Lord. Yeah, she's, like, super popular. Catch me outside. How about that? Like, I'm triggered by her. Um, and she doesn't doesn't appreciate the culture. I feel the same way about the, the artist, Wol Vicky. I guess y'all be feeling some type of way. Ancestry.com did tell me I was black. I have the right to say that I'm black. No one's calling these people out. They feel like it's okay, or they can at least get away with it. And of course, in the meantime, make money while doing so. Already, I Very think true. it's a part of privilege. I think that's pretty, probably another reason why cultural appropriation is often done because of the privilege behind what they do. It's just like they know no one is going to check them. And if they do, they know it's going to blow over because what black black people tend to often get ignored when we say, hey, this is an issue. <laughs> and it just blows on with the wind. They already see us as people that nag and uh, blow stuff up anyway. So like she said, it'll just be blowed over like they're tripping. So what strategies and what ideals do you think that businesses can adopt to avoid cultural appropriation when they are trying to promote their their products to consumers? Like what, what things can they adopt in the workplace to help them avoid those kinds of issues? Having a diverse staff, for one. Yeah. This way, you know, these people can identify it and at least try to, you know, I don't think this is a good idea. Like, yeah. we might want to rethink this and then they can at least bring the receipts to why this may be detrimental, you know, towards the company and, or how it may be disrespectful to another group. So I yeah. definitely think if you can't afford to hire enough, you know, your staff is already free, you know, full, and you can't hire your more, at least probably do a focus group, you know, so at least the people can at least speak out about it. And to yeah. pick it back off what she said, yes, hire, but also let them be a, a, a actual sounding board with these people. Like you have these top heads that are making these final decisions that literally are not being not being considerate of what effect this would be having to the actual direct consumer that is that particular type of person. So <laughs> let them not only be hired, but let them have a, a say in how it will go and how it should be dispersed or shot, delivered, or whatever the case may be. If businesses can place their focus on like the value, like what are they, what is the goal? What, what is the message that you're trying to get across? If they put their focus on that, just as much as they do the products they're trying to sell, I feel like they can easily like refrain from, you know, be, be, becoming guilty of culture appropriation. Or even ask the consumers directly Mm -hmm. on what they want to see because um, a lot of times they don't they just um, assume what they think society wants to see and they don't deliver on what society actually wants to see i think that's really good putting them in position um and especially having some say while they're in position because we wouldn't have those instances where h m has the monkey shirt or the boxer shorts with the the sweatpants below them you know, if you get the right people in position, they would be like, oh no, that's, we're gonna get offended by that. I'm offended by that. I know my people are gonna be offended by, by that. And you're just trying to make $1,500 off a pair of pants. You know, that's all you're thinking about is the dollar and the and the trend. But there's so many people who have the, the say, who are out of touch with all the communities, are out of touch with um, their, their client base. And you know, I would wanna take this moment to just thank Janet Collection for thinking enough of their consumers to hire a black marketing team. Obviously I work with Janet Collection as well. So for me to come on set and to print these models, um, I was really shocked that they actually had, like you said, a black marketing team. I was like, okay, this is really interesting. That's why Janet Collection will continue to be ahead of the game because they are implementing the people that can speak for the people. So All right. that yeah, is a really great attribute to have. Yeah. I have worked with other companies and me and the other stylists be the only black people on set. But everybody else is just, I'm like, girl, you know that wig is not cute that you finna put out. Like it's just yeah, not. That's so, mm -hmm. you know, honestly, I think another way that we can kind of like dismantle this whole thing around a cult cultural appropriation when it's pertaining to the beauty industry with these head honcho guys who are the suppliers, 
the vendors and all of this. Let some of these black women and black men who want to get in this business, give them a piece of the pie. Let us in. That's a way to kind of rectify and help with the subject that we are talking about. Like, let some other cultures get into the supply side and start their own business. When you kind of open that door to other people being a part of your culture and they kind of take it over, then they kind of end up changing a lot of what your values meant. What that, what was the purpose of this? Like she ended that, like they copied somebody's prayer rug. Like, and now, and now that's a carpet. Like, no, this was, this was for prayer. Like literally they copied something that's so sacred to someone's culture and now people are using it to dust their feet like that's crazy to me and i feel like that happens so often like do you guys remember with adele um she dressed up for carnival and i felt like she got a big flack for it because she had bantu knots but i felt like a lot of times like to me that was cultural um appreciation because she was like with those folks they did her hair like it was the whole purpose of that is wearing the costume and enjoying the time with the people but we have so many other people that are doing it the wrong way where it's just like you just want to be naked and drink beer and liquor and turn up and stuff so i i just think it's so important for people to explain like the purpose of what they're doing and and really making that clear because i feel like that you know causes a divide between that thin line between appropriation and appreciation. Like, have y'all ever had like a white coworker come back with corn rolls? And they'll be like, yeah, girl, I gotta take these out. Like, this is so inappropriate. And it's like, bitch, I got corn rolls. Like, what you mean this is inappropriate? <laughs> what? <laughs> when they ask you, can you corn roll my hair? Can you corn roll my hair? I just wanna see what no. it looks like. I just wanna see what it feels like. I just wanna... No, I can't. I'm yeah. tender with it too. No. Right. <laughs> it's gonna come out in an hour. They're not gonna say. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like I, I just don't wanna feel like a costume. Like what you get that for then? If you just gonna like you just got that two days ago. And you talking about and they don't even look bad. Like then you got baby hairs. Like why did they give you baby hairs? You don't have baby hairs. Like I don't I don't know. That's what kills me. And I see that in <laughs> editorial, beauty editorial all the time. I'm like, girl, <laughs> like, y'all don't touch this baby hat thing to the next level. Like, like, have you seen the videos of them cutting their hair to create the baby edges? Hair. What, mm-hmm. like, bro, you're cutting your real hair to make baby hairs. Okay. Look, okay. when, look, when your sauce is your sauce. Well, I want to thank you ladies for being honest because it has to happen. We have to have these hard conversations so that we can impact the beauty industry and make change in the industry that we take advantage of and spend the most dollars in, okay? So I want to mm-hmm. thank you, Ebony. Thank you, Ray Nicole. I want to thank you, Janelle and Aziza for joining us on this call today. Janet Collection, from the bottom of our hearts to you, thank you for being honest, ladies. Mm-hmm. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye.